So we'll just wait for one more second to have any late stragglers join and we'll get going right away. Okay, let's jump into it. So we are here today to talk about a problem that we as a commercial sector as well as a society are facing. And that problem is climate change. So climate change occurs when long-term weather patterns are altered. And this generally looks like a rise in the average global temperatures. And this is happening because there's more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere today than there was at the beginning of the industrial era. In fact, there's 32% more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now than there was just a few decades ago. And some carbon dioxide is okay. So in fact, we do need some carbon dioxide to form a layer around the Earth so it's not too hot, not too cold. But what's happening right now is there's too much carbon dioxide, and this is forming a blanket around the Earth that's trapping heat in, which is the greenhouse effect. And what this results in is extreme weather events like droughts, floods, hurricanes, hotter temperatures, um, melting ice caps, and this is affecting biodiversity, so our iconic polar bear is at risk, but not to mention um, lots of communities as well that are at and under sea level. So the more temperatures rise, the more sea levels rise, the more communities are at risk as well. Just waiting for my slides to catch up. Okay, so where are emissions coming from? Well, 80% of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions are coming from the use of fossil fuels uh, by the electricity generating industry. So the energy sector is contributing 80% of our greenhouse gas emissions. And where does the commercial sector fit in? Well, we do have quite an impact. And so everyone here on the line, um, you know, Bullfrog Power and all of the businesses that we have on the line, we are part of a sector that's contributing 14% of these emissions. So I wanted to share that stat with you to let you know that the, um, the steps that we take to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, they do add up. So if we can work within this 14% to reduce our emissions, that will actually have a very significant impact on our overall greenhouse gas emissions. So let's switch gears and talk a little bit about um, the consumer perspective. So as an industry, there's a lot that we can do that uh, can impact consumer demand. So I wanted to share some stats that were, uh, that were captured from a, a recent poll that actually are pretty hopeful. So 70% of Canadians polled think about the environmental impact of their purchases. And this can look like a lot of different things. It can look like choosing um, Energy Star appliances versus regular conventional appliances. It can look like um, considering the take-back programs for electronics um, or organic and local versus conventional produce. So there's a lot of different factors that come into effect. So 70% of Canadians are thinking about these impacts when they are making purchasing decisions. The next stat is interesting as well. 83% of Canadians are more likely, or somewhat more likely, to buy products from a company that has re reduced its use of fossil fuels. And the last stat I think is the most interesting. 79% of Canadians polled are more likely, or somewhat more likely, to buy products from a company who chooses electricity from wind power providers. So what that means is that if you've got two similar products or two similar services out there, one from a company that is buying renewable energy and one from a company that isn't, someone is almost 80% more likely to choose to purchase from the company that is sourcing from renewable energy. So that, that's really hopeful. And that leads us to where Bullfrog Power fits in. So I know a lot of people on the line know a little bit about Bullfrog Power, or they know a lot about Bullfrog Power, but I thought I would take a second to explain Bullfrog's role in this landscape. So Bullfrog Power is Canada's 100% green energy provider. We help to increase the renewable power in Canada through three main ways. And the first way is what we're most known for, and that's providing a high quality green power offering to Canadian businesses and homes. So our, the power that we source is EcoLogo certified, um, it's new, it's all Canadian, so that is, uh, that's the power that we are selling and uh, providing to our customers. The second pillar 
is that we do a lot of supporting and investing in the development of new renewable energy projects in Canada. So we're increasing the supply of renewable energy in Canada and advancing the de development of new community-based projects. And most recently, this looks a lot like um, community-based solar projects. So you might start seeing a lot more um, solar installations in local areas, working with uh, local businesses and, and, um, and agencies to support more uh, solar development in communities. And the third pillar that we're working on is through education. So we're educating Canadian homes, businesses, and governments about the importance of increasing the amount of renewable energy in Canada in order to build a movement and enable real progress. So through those three ways, Bullfrog Power is increasing the amount of renewable energy supply in Canada. And a little bit more about us. So our mission, simply put, is to provide Canadians with easy and practical 100% renewable energy solutions for homes, businesses, and transportation. We've been around for just over seven years now, so we were founded in 2005 in Ontario, and since then have spread across the country. So we're now serving more than 8,000 homes and over 1,300 business customers across the country. We work with and have earned the respect of many support, uh, leading environmental organizations, such as WWF Canada, um, the David Suzuki Foundation, Pembina Institute, and the Ontario Ministry of the Environment. These organizations not only endorse us and recommend us to their membership bases, but they're also purchasing from Bullfrog Power as well for their facilities. And most recently, in 2012, Bullfrog Power became one of the founding Canadian B Corporations, and these are organizations that use the power of business to solve social and environmental problems. So now we'll talk a little bit about how it works. So the Bullfrog Power Premium that is paid ensures that electricity goes into the grid on your behalf and then is coming from clean, renewable sources. So if we take a look at this bathtub, this bathtub is an analogy for the electricity grid. And right now, in this uh, analogy, we've got electricity flowing in through two different taps, one being brown, one blue. And the brown represents uh, dirtier sources. So this can look like anything from coal and oil and gas and fossil fuel-based sources, as well as nuclear. The blue represents sources from renewable generators, such as wind and low-impact hydro. And of course, um, across different provinces, the, the mix is different. So for an example, in Ontario, the mix is nuclear, um, some coal, some oil, some large impact hydro. In various provinces, it's a different mix. But in general, across Canada, we're aiming to get more power coming from EcoLogo certified wind low impact hydro sources. So over time, as more and more people choose green energy and clean energy infrastructure is built, more renewable energy goes into the grid and less polluting sources are needed. So the goal is to be able to ease off of nuclear, coal, and heavily polluting sources in order to have the grid made up of more um, renewable sources. So that's the goal over time. And in this bathtub analogy, the goal is to have the bathtub coming from uh, pure blue water and ease up off of the, the dirty brown tap. So the environmental benefits of sourcing renewable energy are pretty clear in that it's a great way to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions and reduce your overall impact on the environment. There's also a lot of marketing benefits that go along with being bullfrog powered as well. So I had mentioned earlier that close to 80% of Canadians would choose to buy or support uh, a business that is sourcing from renewable energy. So how does a business go about communicating that? Well, Bullfrog Power is committed to building awareness amongst the business community and the general public about the benefits of green power and about communicating about the organizations and the individuals who are making a difference through buying green power. Bullfrog has a team of communication specialists that work collaboratively with our companies to, to design communications programs that do a lot of things. These programs uh, are able to position your environmental good citizenship locally, provincially, and sometimes even nationally. Um, we expose your corporate brand in a positive light so that when you're communicating to both internal and external stakeholders, you're able to communicate about this commitment to renewable energy. 
We also try to garner positive media coverage in, with respect to your green power purchases in both regional and national media. We provide a lot of on-site communications materials that support your commitment. And we also provide a lot of support for green teams that are within companies as well. So existing green teams, we provide a lot of uh, support and communications materials to help those green teams get the word out. So I'm really pleased today to have uh, three panelists from some of our Bullfrog Powered uh, customers. We've got Bruce Martin from Community Natural Foods. And Community Natural Foods has been Bullfrog Powered since 2009. It's a natural food grocery store based out of Calgary, Alberta. There are three locations in Calgary choosing Bullfrog Powered's green electricity and green natural gas products. We've also got Ryan Totten from NRX Botanicals. NRX Botanicals is a pork coquitlam based company and produces nutritional supplements to provide customers um, natural alternatives over traditional medicinal drugs. And NRX has been Bullfrog Powered since 2010. Finally, we've got Ashley Collins from Moksha Yoga. One of the earliest businesses to sign up for Bullfrog, Moksha Yoga Studios has been supporting green energy through Bullfrog since 2008. Moksha is a group of independent hot yoga studios committed to ethical, compassionate, and environmentally conscious living. There are currently 41 st studios across Canada choosing green electricity and four choosing green natural gas as well. So in just a moment, I'm going to hand it over to Bruce, Ryan, and Ashley to talk a little bit about uh, their sustainability best practices and their relationship with Bullfrog Power. So Bruce, over to you. Hi, thanks. Um, I thought I'd start uh, my conversation uh, with a little bit of background on community so that people know a little bit more about uh, the company just to put into my comments into context. Um, we're mainly a retailer in Calgary and Calgary Centric, so um, we, uh, we have two large stores and we're about to open a third one uh, in uh, a few weeks uh, in the city. Uh, but the stores are um, two of Canada's largest volume uh, natural foods, natural product stores. Uh, so, um, so they're a pretty big deal in both Calgary and, and Canada. We're also uh, vertically integrated, so we, we own quite a bit of commercial real estate that uh, we occupy and, and we're also landlords in, and uh, we make about 20% of what we sell. Uh, so fairly complex business, and um, uh, we have over 300 employees, so, so it's a nice medium-sized uh, corporation. Uh, the biggest thing that you need to understand is that we've been around since 1977, and so we're we're in our 36th year, and and um, as a result of that, we're we've been pioneers forever um, as far as sustainability and environmental issues are concerned, and and um, and so we've been at this for a long time, and it's just an interesting place to be where. Um, uh, where you were pretty much all alone in the early days, uh, now we're very much part of um, what is a mainstream mentality. We're, we're getting in society very close to a tipping point where um, sustainability and environmental issues are top of mind, as uh, you saw in the last slides, uh, with the majority of the, of the public. So we're going to go to the next slide. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll comment um, later at the end of the um, near the end of the, my presentation, my slides around the environmental issues. But just wanted to to comment that sustainability um, is really um, more than just environmental issues. It's it's how you're relating to people, and and so just thought I'd talk a little bit about how we make sustainable decisions at Community. Uh, it starts from matching with our vision, and our vision at Community is that we want to have the the most uh, uh, passionate, engaged, and loyal uh, employees and customers in our industry, and so it's very people-oriented. And um, uh, as soon as you start to think about things that way, um, where it's uh, people decisions, it starts to become very easy to uh, make your environmental choices. Second thing that we do is that we really think about um, our business in the long term. And so it's kind of nice that we're privately owned and, and don't, uh, I've worked for corporations where, where making those quarterly statements was, uh, was really important in getting your quarterly numbers. Uh, but uh, at Community, we um, really think about things for the long term. And so 
it's very easy for us to be making uh, investments that pay off down the road uh, multi years out. Um, we also give preference to local. A lot of the, the, the public um, actually see uh, making decisions around uh, local as more important than any environmental issues even. Um, and then um, lastly but not least, we make decisions for the well-being of the planet. Uh, so uh, that um, for us is uh, pretty much a table stake and has been for um, uh, decades. Next slide. So just a handful of, um, of, uh, of decisions that we've made or, or projects that we've had. Um, <clears throat> we just recently um, did a, a renovation of our uh, a cafe in, in, uh, in our largest store and um, installed LED light, uh, lighting and um, have a high efficiency uh, refrigeration system that uh, is uh, computer operated to uh, optimize power consumption. Um, all of the wood was um, FSC sourced and so it's sustainably uh, sourced uh, material. Uh, laminates were environmentally friendly so uh, rock laminates and uh, silstone counters. Um, low flow toilets, uh, these are all traditional uh, things on the list here that, that uh, many companies are, are choosing and following. Um, the comment that I'd want to make uh, around environmental here with this slide, the overriding comment is that it's kind of never ending. It's um, uh, the list and what you can do from an environmental perspective uh, is extremely complex and um, it's something that you want to be thinking about all the time. And so even though we have high attention to it, um, we don't uh, purport or say to the public or even say internally that uh, the job is done or even close to being done. It's something that we have to have high attention to all the time. And so uh, even though we've been at it for a long, long time, um, we see things all the time every day that uh, continue to need attention from an environmental perspective. And, and so, um, uh, again, that, that's, uh, that's part of the reason that we uh, chose Bullfrog. And if we could uh, go to the next slide. On the waste side of things, um, we uh, had to, because Calgary was a bit of a laggard in, in cities, uh, in terms of recycling and waste management, um, we had to uh, be resourceful and in some instances actually create our own uh, systems for, for waste. Um, we were the first in Calgary and early in Canada in eliminating the use of uh, plastic bags and um, uh, we have eliminated um, uh, over 800,000 uh, bags from landfill since we've made that decision. Um, we uh, also have eliminated the sale and use in our stores of um, single-use plastic uh, water bottles, so um, for, uh, for uh, consumers buying water. Um, one of the systems that we generated was um, using a local not-for-profit, an animal shelter called Rasta, uh, to send our plant-based waste to, and they use that for feed for their animals for, in their shelter. Um, uh, we uh, eliminated tiles and the waxing and polishing uh, in the stores and went to polish concrete so that um, uh, we could eliminate toxic cleaners. And uh, we have our own compo composting system uh, for uh, things that don't go to uh, the animal shelter. And then uh, to talk about uh, our host today with Bullfrog Power, we uh, made the choice to go with them for both electricity and natural gas. And I have to say that um, uh, I, was, I was skeptical when the natural gas offer came out and did a significant amount of investigation and, uh, and really was quite impressed with the uh, validity and the appropriateness of um, how uh, their gas is being harvested and, and the uh, environmental benefit that's associated with it. And, and so um, it was an easy decision and, and um, just to reinforce what was said around Bullfrog, the, uh, uh, the clincher on the decision was that um, being a conservative and shy Canadian company, it was just kind of nice to have uh, somebody that would um, assist us in telling our story and being uh, uh, a pros at marketing um, the good things that you do when you're um, uh, making environmental um, uh, 
uh, initiatives happen. And so uh, we found Bullfrog to be just a great partner in terms of that professional marketing that comes along with it. Um, we've already mentioned the, uh, the, the compressors. Not only we do it in our, in our um, cafe renovation, but then we went and retrofitted our second store with the same things because we found it so effective. Um, we have solar powered hot water heating in one of our facilities, um, added a significant amount of insulation on three different projects that we've done, uh, have gone to natural light with installing skylights in one of our facilities, use air curtains, water, hot water on demand, um, have our own uh, RO water installation, and um, uh, have about 60-70% uh, conversion now with uh, high efficiency lighting uh, in uh, the properties that we have. Next slide. So um, <clears throat> that wasn't a complete list of all of the environmental issues that, that, that we've uh, attacked. Um, it probably would represent uh, less than a third uh, of the things that we've done uh, and, and nothing revolutionary in them. Just um, uh, I think it's what you would want to take note at is that it's a long list and needs to be longer. And so uh, lots of activities that uh, make up um, your environmental initiatives. Um, but I thought I would uh, kind of end up my piece by um, talking about uh, why you would want to bother doing this. And um, uh, some people would, would take this tact and, and, uh, and use uh, environmental initiatives just because it's the right thing to do. Um, I, I'd say we would probably be in that camp somewhat. Uh, but um, I really want to put forward that it just is doing business right. It's the right thing from a business perspective. Um, uh, you know, the, uh, the likes of major corporations like Procter & Gamble and Walmart um, are hard on uh, environmental issues because they see the business benefit associated with it, that uh, the, the primary tenant around environmental issues is reduce, stop doing things. Um, and uh, when you do that in a business context, uh, it just leads to saving money. And so I just thought I would list a few of the things that um, uh, our sustainability issues have led us to. Um, and so uh, um, when we started focusing on the employees from a sustainability perspective um, and stabilized our workforce and really reduced our attrition rate, employees love working for community. Um, spending a little bit more money on a per employee basis uh, led to a 10% reduction in our payroll costs uh, because um, we didn't have a revolving door with employees and, and um, uh, people uh, had longevity with the organization and we didn't have to reinvest constantly in training. Uh, and so um, spending a little bit more per person led to a, a dramatic drop in spending overall uh, with our employees. Um, when we go out on a sustainability um, event when we're educating the community uh, and participating with the community, the word of mouth advertising uh, that's associated with that have increased consistently. Our customer counts are uh, by 15%. And so um, really putting yourself out there and offering up information uh, just by being a good neighbor um, has really made a difference in terms of um, how the community views us. And so um, uh, that brings uh, positive reputation to your business and, and is really a, a fundamental pillar in our ability to grow our business. Um, talked about the uh, staff retention and, and morale um, and the benefits that come with that. Um, that reputation has led us to a place of uh, we're very often first in market because um, we're well known in the industry, we're well known in the city. and. Um, when somebody wants to bring something to market that relates to our niche and what we're selling, they show up on our doorstep first and get a very positive reception. And so uh, that's been a benefit around that. Um, it's also led to a relationship that where we're a minority partner in a local uh, permanent indoor farmers market. Uh, and, and that was done to help and facilitate um, uh, bringing farmers to market in the city and bringing them closer to consumers. Um, it's made our recruitment as we've grown. Uh, you can imagine with a consistent 15% uh, 
uh, growth rate with customers that we've got a pretty successful and growing business. And so we're constantly looking for um, uh, new employees, new new staff members, and, and uh, it's made that recruitment much, much easier. And then lastly, um, we have a, um, a very easy time of getting uh, third-party recognition. And so uh, within our industry, within the city, within all of the trade magazines, within um, uh, consumer surveys, um, we're the go-to place in the city for people that want to um, uh, find out about what they could do about their wellness and uh, and we get that recognition and, and all of those things uh, are I think uh, directly linked to our sustainability position and uh, have really substantially helped our business. And I think that's my last slide. Thanks so much Bruce, that was really interesting. Um, like not only are those uh, the, the list of things that you've done really impressive, but I love that you talked about some of the HR and employee benefits of your um, commitment to sustainability. So sometimes we just think of the environmental benefits and as well as the PR benefits, but really the, your stats about your your payroll and the uh, the turnout at your events is really telling as well about this commitment. So that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Ryan, over to you. Ryan? Hi there, thank you. Great, thanks. Yeah, hi. Thanks very much, Bruce. That was extremely enlightening. Really, uh, really cool. Um, I'd like to say that I'm quite proud to be in league with, with who's on the line here because I respect both these businesses very much and uh, while well, all three, Bullfrog included, and um, I'm happy that everyone's jumped on here to uh, to learn a little bit about what's happening with Bullfrog and some of the businesses that do business with them. Um, NRX uh, is uh, a pork equipment based company. Uh, we do fantastic nutritional supplements and uh, we are always looking for ways to be current and to move and to change and as a small company um, we're afforded that and being green is definitely a part of being healthy and it's a part of who we are. So we've wanted to always expand upon that. And what we're looking at here on this slide are just sort of our key points as a company. And, and we have a, a very large booth um, that we have this, this design on that, that lets people know at um, trade shows what we're all about. And you'll see in the last point there that unique green practices is there and that's just to let people know that we do have an awareness about this. We do know that consumers care about that, but at our core value, uh, we believe that for our consumers to be healthy and for us to put out healthy products, we also need to approach the environment in a healthy manner as well. So we're always looking to ways to be that way, to be green. And bringing Bullfrog in is definitely part of that. And I think that I have Moksha Yoga to thank uh, for NRX's uh, connection to Bullfrog because I practice yoga at Moksha and, and I saw the Bullfrog Power um, sticker in the window there and started looking into it then and, and brought it to the attention of uh, the management team at NRX. And, and our general manager, uh, Reza, decided to bring on Bullfrog. So that's kind of an interesting history there. And our connection to community, we actually have our products in Community Natural Foods, and they're a very strong retail partner of ours. So if we could just move to the next slide. This is our booth in action. Um, just wanted to show people what this looks like in real life. And we get a lot of comments about the natural scenery of our products and, and this uh, booth and a lot of questions about what our unique green practices are and what that means. Um, so as a business, we're always trying to find uh, small ways to mention what we're trying to do. And, and uh, if we can go to the next slide, I think we can describe a few of these things.
one of the big deals for us in the past was a lot of waste in printing and we needed to find a way to um, reduce the amount of waste so controlling the inventory was huge just paying a lot more attention to what we we're printing and when um, and the biggest step that we've taken now is we're working with a printer uh, that is called Hemlock and they do carbon neutral printing so their entire facility is uh, carbon neutral and they do offsetting for all of their print jobs so that's something that we're doing now um, you know when we were looking at what opportunities there were for a company like us to reduce our carbon footprint and, and uh, to be greener printing was a big one uh, we used to print a lot of product in overseas so as we all know that's a you know it's a pretty big deal to have something printed overseas and shipped over here and then spread around um, so although the cost is higher to print in smaller batches and to print in Canada and to do carbon neutral printing um, it just makes a lot more sense environmentally and it jives a lot more with who we are as a company and what our lifestyle is Another one of the options that we wanted to do for uh, our printing and our like our our POS sales materials is is we want to have the QRCs the the QR codes on as much as we possibly can to give those people that want a digital option one that is instantly available so they don't have to pick up that product card and walk away with it they can just take a shot with their uh, smartphone or their you know their digital device and they can just walk away with it um, in a digital atmosphere and, and be able to share it as well that way. So it allows for dissemination of the product in a digital manner um, and also just reduces the overall usage of these, uh, these print materials. Uh, one of the other steps that we're looking at is our shipping. You know, we do ship products all over Canada and uh, well, all over the world, really. We ship to eight different countries, so uh, we started looking at our packing materials as well as a way to reduce our uh, our footprints and, and finding recycled Canadian packing materials uh, was a big one. Um, we got away from the polystyrene peanuts that people used to pack, uh, and we're looking at, uh, or we're using um, a cellulose-based product now and we're actually looking to work with a Canadian company who's making a, an even more interesting and different product now um, that you can create in-house and as, as you need it on demand and they're, they're a very interesting company. I don't have the information on them right now but uh, we'll probably see a lot more of them in the future. Another printing job is uh, is our labels. It's a huge amount of printing that is done. And again, we used to get very large amounts printed to try to reduce our costs, and they would be printed overseas. But what we found is again, you know, the the impact with that, as well as just the waste. Uh, you know, if there's a change in a label, or or you wanted to be a little more nimble, um, sometimes you're held back with these thousands of labels that you have and you don't want to waste them uh, they are an investment but we did find that again it was uh, there was too much waste happening there so now we are working with local printers getting things done in small batches it's a it's more work um, on our part but in the end it's worth it and something that I wanted to just kind of tie back to what Bruce was saying is the complexity of being green uh, definitely agree there all of the parameters and all of the different ways that you can be green and and the many arguments for each one um, one of the quite contentious issues is the use of plastics uh, versus glass especially in the natural industry the perception there is that glass is the most natural and the, and the most healthy sort of option um, but what we found in our research uh, of uh, carbon footprinting analysis on all of these things is that um, glass, especially when you're in a shipping-based sort of business like we are, of shipping products everywhere, becomes a very large environmental footprint. Uh, 
because of the gas involved, uh, all of the, uh, the shipping, because of the weight, uh, the extra packaging, the, the larger size typically um, relative to plastics, when you start looking at a larger scale, this really, really adds up. Uh, so PETE plastic is really um, the best choice for us. It's ability to block the oxygen, to block the air, to block the light, keeps the products pristine, and it's very, very low kind of transfer rate of, of any toxic uh, materials into product is also virtually akin to glass. And it's ability to equacycle, um, you know, meaning that it doesn't really break down into lesser and lesser and more toxic plastics each time it's recycled it can actually be straight recycled back into a food containing uh, plastic um, each time over a very long period so it can keep on going. Um, this makes it a lot more superior over say HDPE plastic and, and uh, as well as the, uh, the toxic way of making plastics. It's definitely toxic but we're talking about lesser of evils and, and peak sort of wins out on, on all of these. So that's why we go there. And as far as uh, trying to tell everybody about these things, and that's, you know, that's the marketing value too, and that's sort of what Bruce ta was talking about is the, the why bother on all of this. You know, there's definitely marketing value, but um, there's staff value, staff ownership value, people feeling really good about the choice they've made in their workplace and, and um, knowing that a company cares. You know, businesses are businesses, but they do have uh, they do have a lifestyle involved, and and it's really good to nurture those things. So I think there's a lot of value in that. Um, but I really also do think there's a big difference between greenwash and um, you know being green. You know, not all green decisions are decisions that save a company money. And it, unfortunately, the bigger a company is, that's basically the way they see it. So if they can save money by doing something green, then they'll do it and they'll brag about it for months. Um, but uh, you know, to do the real hard green choices, uh, you don't see a lot of the bigger companies doing that. I just like to make that little differentiation there as well. Um, we also like to talk about bullfrog and, and, our, and our, um, our green efforts and our community efforts and things to, on our on our blogs, we're just finding ways to engage with people and talk about what, what we're doing out there as a company to, to try to be green and to, to try to better ourselves as we go along. Look at the next slide. Now one of the things that we did is uh, we did a quick three and a half minute corporate video that just talks about NRX and who we are, what we're all about. and. Um, you know, we make products that are called greens, so this whole project is called the greening of NRX, uh, this, this path that we're on to always seek out and find different ways to be green. Um, and this is sort of what this slide is, it's just a screenshot of that uh, corporate video that we made that, uh, you know, helps people understand the steps that we, that we have started taking. If you look at the next slide. So that's just sort of a, a little uh, rundown of, of a few of the things that we do. You know, the wind and, and solar, the, the efforts we're doing with Bullfrog and um, always using floor stewardship council certified papers and vegetable based inks, nail printing with hemlock printers and being completely carbon neutral in all of our printing, um, going local with stuff and uh, focusing a lot more on digital advertising instead of only print advertising. I think that's been a, a big thing as well. Investing strongly in our website so there's lots of information there for people to get and, and not always wanting to have something printed out. And um, it also, investing well in your website I think is a green aspect because it allows good search engine optimization so that when people punch things into Google, um, they find you and, and there you are and now you're, you're um, speaking to them in a digital uh, arena instead of having to rely upon telling your story through print. If, uh, next. 
I guess this uh, here is just a, an example of, of of talking about Bullfrog, you know, and I, I like to do that because the reason we're with Bullfrog is because another company chose to do that, Moksha. You know, they chose to have Bullfrog Powers um, uh, pamphlets on the desk at the studio, and that's basically started the, the chain of events for NRX to be involved with Bullfrog as a part of our the greening of NRX. And within this blog, that's something I talked about, was uh, this, this idea of trying to stay away from greenwashing and really trying to own being green. So I think that about wraps it up for us. You know, we're, we're, uh, we're a small company and this is a, a, a good project for us and it's something just like Bruce said, it's always evolving and there's always more options and uh, more things to look at and it's a pretty exciting thing to, to always think about this and to look at it as a puzzle and, and find ways to, to team up with others and to just move forward on this. Great. Thank you so much, Ryan. That was really interesting. And I really love the tie-ins to both Community Natural Foods and Moksha Yoga. It really is quite a strong community of, um, of companies that are taking these environmental initiatives. So it's great to hear the linkages there. So now I'm going to turn it over to Ashley from Moksha Yoga. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Um, and thanks, Ryan. That was really great. I actually never knew your story about how you became a client of Bullfrog. So it's really quite cool for me to see that the initiatives we take to help protect the planet are in fact getting noticed. So um, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, so as Sarah mentioned, my name is Ashley Collins. I'm the communications manager for Moksha Yoga International. And I've also been a Moksha Yoga teacher since 2010 and a Moksha Yoga student since 2004. So um, as you may be able to see, I really love my job. <laughs> uh, I started as a student in Moksha, became a teacher and now work for the international team because I wholeheartedly believe in the work that we do. And I'm not just talking about the asana, the physical postures of a yoga practice, although of course I believe in those benefits too. Um, what I'm actually talking about specifically are the seven pillars on which Moksha Yoga was built and on which we conduct our company. Uh, we also teach our teachers that way and build our studios and communities that way as well. So those seven pillars are be healthy, be accessible, live green, Sangha support, reach out, live to learn, and be peace. Um, I could certainly speak a lot about each pillar, but today, of course, given the nature of this webinar, um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our third pillar, which is live green. Um, so first of all, a little bit about who we are and what we do. We are Moksha Yoga International, and our team is made up of Ted Grand and Jessica Robertson, who are the co-founders of Moksha Yoga, and you can see them in that little picture on the bottom left there. Um, myself and five other amazing people and together we oversee, maintain and support our almost 70 studios worldwide. Um, all of our studio owners and teachers as well and also our current students and potential students. So our style of yoga and our company of the same name, Mochi Yoga, was born in 2004 from the vision of Ted and Jess who were both longtime yogis and had previously worked for not-for-profit organizations to support environmental protection and sustainable living. And at the time, they were both Bikram teachers, um, but were finding it increasingly difficult to teach under the leadership of a person whose values they didn't necessarily share. So they left the community and were determined to bring yoga to the world in a way that made it accessible to everybody and placed great importance on protecting the earth. And what started as two small studios in Ontario has grown into a family of almost 70 environmentally conscious hot yoga studios across Canada, the US, Australia, and Europe. And um, needless to say, these individuals, both of them are huge inspirations to me and are definitely two of the greenest people that I know. So we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, so what does yoga really have to do with living an environmentally conscious lifestyle? Well, other than stretching it all out in a space that's built with green principles in mind, the practice of yoga itself is actually about being mindful of how we use our energy. It's about conserving that energy so that we can use it for the benefits of all beings everywhere, specific to your asana practice or the physical practice of yoga, the, the postures that you do in a hot room. Um, this refers to the conservation of prana or the breath, life force, energy, whatever you choose to call it. 
but as those of us who have taken a few classes might know, what we do on the mat can be and often is a metaphor for the lives we live outside of the hot room. So as we learn to conserve energy within our bodies so that it can be better used to benefit our practice, we also um, inadvertently learn that if we conserve energy in our homes, at work, during leisure time, um, things like that, that we benefit the planet and the lives of those who share it with us as well. So let's go to the next slide. Thanks. Um, and with that in mind, Moksha Yoga International requires that each Moksha Yoga studio is built and managed in an eco-friendly way so that we can conserve as much energy as possible and contribute to a greener, more sustainable planet. Um, studio owners are encouraged to be creative in their green efforts, but specifically they're asked to use VOC-free paints, recycled or sustainable flooring, um, minimal, minimal materials where possible, um, energy efficient radiant panel heating, energy efficient appliances, low flow toilets, showers, faucets, green cleaning products, and to purchase green energy such as Bullfrog Power as a way to offset all of the power they use and create a greener electrical get grid. So just as uh, Bruce and Ryan said, we're not, you know, transforming things or doing anything crazy per se, but uh, we do definitely take as much um, initiative as we can to be as green as possible in that way. Beyond those things, most studios have incorporated even more eco-friendly elements in an effort to completely green their space. So each studio is actually independently owned and operated. So um, outside of those things that they agree to, we also have this community of really resourceful people who, um, who are really quite creative at, at greening their space. So for example, at Moksha Yoga Boer West, every piece of furniture and every door is made of reclaimed wood and their front desk is made from old doors. At Moksha Yoga St. Catharines, they installed bike racks outside um, to encourage studi students to cycle to class. And they even had quite a few dedicated students who biked there all winter, which I thought was awesome. In Burnaby, the studio walls are made out of hemp. And in the summer, they grow a community garden for students to grow and harvest their own food. And out in East Vancouver, they've built their studi studio with tons of south-facing windows um, just to generate natural heat and light. So those are just a few examples of what some of our studio owners have done to help uh, protect the environment. And as you can see, the creative possibilities are absolutely limitless. That was just an example of four of our studios. And as I mentioned, we're almost at 70 now worldwide. So there, those examples are, are just, um, just a few. Thank you. Um, so as I mentioned in the previous slide, each of our studios is required to purchase green energy, but of course not just any green energy. <laughs> Moksha Yoga has been working with Bullfrog Power since 2008, and in fact, um, the Moksha Yoga co-founder Ted Grand was one of the first people to purchase Bullfrog Power for his home back in 2004. And since then, we have found it to be a natural fit for us, and, um, and of, all, uh, of our almost 70 studios worldwide, more than 50 are using Bullfrog Power. I think Sarah mentioned um, 41 across Canada and then five on natural gas, so I might have my numbers a little messed up there, but we're, we're in and around the 50 number anyway. Um, and the others outside, so, so that's almost 50, and then um, the other 20 uh, are outside of the Bullfrog area, so they use an alternative company. But all of our studios are definitely greening their energy in that way. Uh, in working with Bullfrog Power, we've been able to claim emissions reductions. Um, and this is a number uh, that Tom uh, had spoke to Ted about almost a year ago, so it's a lot more since then. But um, we can claim emissions reductions in the realm of 1,000 tons of CO2, 2,000 kilograms of nitrous oxide, and 44 kilograms of highly radioactive nuclear waste. So not only does this contribute to the commitment we've made as a community so to support a healthy planet, but it also acts as an example of some of the things our students can do as we model for them the change that we want to see in the world. As a group of hot yoga studios, we know that the amount of power we use to heat our bodies may seem a little contradictory to being green, and that's exactly why it's so important for us to work with a renewable energy company like Bullfrog. When it came time to make that choice back when Moksha Yoga was started, um, I guess almost nine years ago now, uh, Ted and Jess felt that the benefits of the heated practice far outweighed the negative impact of our specific power consumption, but they also knew that it was important to offset our use in the best possible way, and hence our relationship with the amazing people at Bullfrog Power. 
So that, um, that pretty much sums it up for me. I just wanted to um, wrap things up with a quote from Gandhi that basically I think is a perfect representation of the community that Ted and Jess created and that they endeavor to create every day. And that uh, quote is, if we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. As a man changes his own nature, so does the attitude of the world change towards him. We need not wait to see what others do. So that, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashley. That was really interesting. Um, we're so thrilled to have so many Moksha Yoga Studios on board with Bullfrog Power. And I really liked hearing about the individual um, initiatives that are taking place at the studios across the country that are very much in line with their own spirit and their own personality, um, you know, with regards to studios in Toronto versus Vancouver. I find that really interesting. So thank you very much. Thank you. So I wanted to invite uh, members from the audience to use the chat and question function to ask any questions uh, they might have for our panelists or for, for Bullfrog Power. We do have a few questions, but please do feel free to keep the questions coming. We do have a few minutes left. And so I wanted to also take this opportunity to thank Bruce and Ryan and Ashley for, uh, for their great uh, and interesting um, talks through the panel with regards to their sustainability best practices and how they've been able to weave bullfrog power into that. I wanted to also take this opportunity to invite the members from our audience who are thinking about joining Bullfrog Power to, to get in touch with us, to give us a call or, or send us an email to learn a little bit more. I've put up a slide um, that has some members from the health and wellness community that are already Bullfrog Powered, so you might see some companies that you recognize or that you work with. Uh, but this just goes to show that we are working with quite a few companies in this sector and uh, would love to, to continue working with more companies in this sector. So we'll open it up for questions. Um, I do have a question on the line specifically for NRX. And the question is, are you producing plant-based products? Ryan, did you want to jump in and address that? Sorry about that. Just wanted to make sure I was unmuted. Uh, yeah, we are producing plant-based products. Our flagship products are uh, vegan products. Um, I don't know how much you want me to get into on that, but yes, we do create uh, several different plant-based products, and we do include raw organic uh, ingredients in many of our supplements as well. That's great. Thank you, Ryan. Um, we have a question for Bruce. Um, has I, I think you kind of alluded to this, but maybe you could, could uh, go into a bit more specifics. Have you noticed that your green efforts, Bullfrog Power included amongst your other efforts, uh, increasing customer loyalty? Have you heard any anecdotes or feedback, or do you just get a little <laughs> sense that there is an increased um, loyalty in your customer base because of what you're doing for the environment? Um, so, so the easy answer to that is yes, but um, just to elaborate on that a little bit more, that it wasn't until we really added in um, the employee side of things where we had uh, the, the people in our stores um, really um, educated and trained and understanding and um, happy to be at community. Uh, the combination of that with the environmental issues has really um, uh, made a dramatic difference. And so uh, I think that the public uh, pretty much expected us, uh, as I, the term I use as a table state, that we would be environmentally responsible and, and held us accountable to that and were interested and made sure that we were that way. Uh, but when we put the the motivated and, and uh, educated and, and employees in, in tandem with that, it's just made a huge difference. Great, thank you. And then we have a question that is for everyone, so anyone, please do feel free to jump in. The question was, um, if you see any reduction in your overall electricity usage because you've decided to purchase green energy through Bullfrog Power. So I think the question is, um, is purchasing green power motivating you to use less energy in general? 
I'll, uh, I'll I'll step in on that one first. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's really uh, it's really a bit of a paradox uh, because uh, bullfrog power is a premium. Uh, it actually, when you do the economic equation on on on, uh, on power reduction initiatives, uh, it accelerates the payback. And so, um, uh, it, in fact, uh, it really uh, encouraged us to become even more aggressive with. Um, our energy reduction initiatives, and uh, for a while we've expanded our properties. But for a while we were actually um, offsetting about 110 percent of our our, uh, our our power consumption uh, because uh, we had reduced our, our our power consumption by so much as a result of that. And so it's um, it, it it's just kind of a hidden benefit from from paying that premium. Yeah, I, w I would say the same thing. We, um, I, I mean, like I mentioned, our studios are independently owned, so I can't speak to each studio specifically, but I know that um, we do what we can in general, turning off lights and turning down the heat and things like that when we can. But, for example, as I mentioned, mentioned in East Vancouver, they built the studio with south-facing windows to try to um, reduce the amount that they need to use. And for example, in LA or in the summertime in Canada, when it's hotter, um, there's less need to use the energy. So they're just finding really resourceful ways to save in general that way too. Um, I don't think at NRX they're, they're, we have uh, uh, gone that far to notice that in our head office. Everyone at the head office, I've noticed in the past three years, has taken, has really elevated their awareness of environmental issues, period. And I don't think it's just at NRX. I think it's people everywhere. I've always been a hippie at heart, and I've always been into this sort of thing. So for me, it's been really interesting to watch all of what, what I've been doing for, you know, 15 years or more, now becoming trendy and cool to do. Um, and I love it when, when people come to me and say, hey, do you know if you use a power bar for your stereo and stuff and you don't get this stuff that's called ghost drain? And I'm like, I love that, you know, because, you know, I've been doing that for 15 years. But um, I think that not because we're using bullfrog power that, that we're using less um, energy at our offices. I think it's just an in general thing that people are turning the lights off more, um, they're just being a lot more aware. So yeah, we're, we're actively using less, but I don't think it's connected to the fact that we're using bullfrog energy. Thanks, Ryan. I think you make a really good point that in a lot of companies that are choosing to take the initiative to pay more for green energy, they're already um, in the mindset that they would be conserving anyway. So I think that is a, a good point. So we are uh, right at the end of our time. Thanks everyone for the questions and thank you so much to Bruce, Ryan and Ashley for your really interesting discussions today. Um, I certainly enjoyed hearing about it and I learned a lot. And um, to anyone else on the line, please do feel free to get in touch if you have any questions or would like to chat further about renewable energy for your businesses as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks yeah, thank everyone. You.